And now it's time for a very special visit to Brookfield Farm in Ambridge, where Christmas preparations are underway. tray through, Chris. The one with the brandy snaps and cake. Oh, there's enough food here to feed a regiment. <laughs> How many are you expecting, for goodness sake? Well, there's Uncle Tom and Uncle Walter to start with. They always have hearty appetites. Oh, you said they were having lunch at the ball. Surely they'll be full up by now. Well, you know what that means at this time of year. A few seasonal hot toddies and more than the usual number of specials. <laughs> by the time they've walked those off, I should think they'll be ravenous. <laughs> Oh, I should her a mop popping over. I shouldn't think so. You know she's asked us all over to Glebe Cottage this year. I should imagine she'll be tearing around in a panic. Oh, yeah, I bet she will. It's always daunting cooking for your mum. That's why I decided to have this tea party today. It seemed a bit odd to have Christmas without doing all the usual cooking. You must be joking. I'd jump at the chance if I were you. <laughs> imagine a Christmas without having to slave over a hot stove. <laughs> George seems to think that the turkey just jumps on the table ready for well, Maybe he believes Santa Claus brings it. Oh, sounds as though Santa's doing his rounds early this year. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Hello, you two. Happy Merry Christmas, Christmas you two. Hello, <laughs> there, the old family, the old beauty. Hello, Merry Christmas. Compliments of the season. Uh, 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 and here, a little something from me. Uh, oh. Something from me and Prue. Oh, thank you both. Not to be opened until tomorrow, my Thank Ooh. you. I'll put them under the tree with the rest of the presents. Oh, hello, Chris. Nice to see you by yourself. By myself. Ah, without having to crane me neck because you're on some blooming great horse. Oh, Tom, look at all that. Oh, my, they've done us proud. Mind if I just... No, have... no, Walter. Manners maketh man. Oh, that's all right, Uncle Walter. Here, have one of these sandwiches. And there's plenty more where they came from. Mm. Oh, well, if, if you insist. Tuck in. Who uh, else uh, have you invited then, Jill? I'm going to make a start on these sandwiches, too. Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure who's coming. I've told everyone I met in the village just to drop by whenever they had a free moment. So I suppose that's anyone who's not at work. Work? I don't know as much work gets done at this time of year. <laughs> All these Christmas parties more like. Oh, I've heard stories that would freeze your blood. <laughs> oh, you should have heard Elizabeth going on about the echo. Yeah, they're having their third Christmas party today. <laughs> their third. Them people as works in offices are the worst. Oh, yes, Uncle Tom. I suppose you speak from years of experience. Well, I've been around. I keeps me here to the ground. Their third. I said, why don't you take me along, Elizabeth? Oh, good gracious. Oh, sh I can hear someone coming through. Oh, oh, yes. Perhaps that'll be Mrs. P. Mm. Uh, with a dog woman. She wouldn't be at an office party. Sure. Oh, hello, Happy love. Christmas. Happy Christmas. Love. What a surprise. Oh, yes. Hey, come and sit down, love. Is anything the matter? Miss Thomas is a good. What was that, Uncle Tom? I think Miss they're Thomas giving you a warm nice. welcome. Oh, Mum, it's all hopeless. Hmm? First, Mark got all the wrong vegetables in, and then I found he'd forgotten to take the turkey out of the freezer. No, no. Oh, dear, oh. Lord, oh dear. So it won't have had a full 24 hours to defrost like it's supposed to. Never oh mind, dear. Shula. Here, have a sherry. And now, when I need him to give me a hand like he promised, he phones home to say he'll be kept late at the office party. Oh. See? I told you. They can be wild, Shula, these office parties. Go on, love. No, I wouldn't mind going to one, though. Well, that's it, really. Oh, I suppose it all got on top of me a bit. None of it seems very drastic to me. Is the turkey defrosting now? Well, yes. And did you manage to buy the right vegetables this morning? Yes. Then I don't think there's anything much to worry about, is there? No, I suppose not. I just wanted it all to run perfectly, like Christmas here always oh. does. <laughs> you can't expect to get it right first time. Christmas is a fine art, you yes, know. Yes, of course you can't. No, of course not. I'm going to go and see to the rest of the food. Help yourselves. And just call out if you want some more tea. All right, Jill. And you yell if you need any help. Tom, you'll be mother. <laughs> I always spell it. <laughs> I'll pour. Now, is everyone close enough to the fire? Yes, yes. No, yes I'm all right. Thank I you. can understand your being upset, though, Shula. 
It's so hard when you first set up home and try to recreate the happiness you knew as a child at Christmas. Oh, they used to have no office parties, eh, Tom? Oh, they was unheard of, Walter. Unheard of. Mm. There's some people rouse a lot at Christmas time. Uh, it's a strain. Some families are under a lot of strain at Christmas. Oh, what does you know about it? Well, I've got eyes, haven't I? And I've been in Ambridge as long as anybody. I bet Mum and Dad never rowed at Christmas. Oh, sure, of course they did. Everyone does. It's not a serious thing. And even... What? Oh, nothing. No, what? Oh, tell the truth and shame the devil. Well, I was going to say, even in your father's first marriage. Oh, to Grace. Uh, Grace Fairbrother as well. Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned it. Why not? That was decades ago. Ages before I was born. It was another world then. Yes, but your mother... Well... She still doesn't much like people to talk about it. She's right, Shula. That's one topic Jill's very touchy about. Oh, well, you can understand why, can't you? Surely you're not trying to say she's jealous. After all these years? Oh, come on. Well, no, no, not jealous. No, I wouldn't say jealous, no. Grace meant a great deal to your father. Not just to him. The whole family loved her. Well, a lot of people seemed impressed by her. I can't say as I ever was. She was charming and very attractive. She was pretty enough. I'll say that. She was, well, very fond of her for a long time. They was both courting other people. It was years before he plucked up the courage to ask her out. Ah, she'd been abroad. When she come back, he fell for her. Hook, line and sinker. (laughs) That's hard to imagine. Dad is a young swain. Where did they go? A young farmer's hop? Oh, this was back in the early 50s. Everything was much more straight-laced then. Oh, some of us weren't. (laughs) (laughs) If a young man asked a girl out then, well, if he was respectable, he'd ask her home to tea with his parents. Grace, Mum suggested you might like to come to tea at Brookfield tonight. Will you come? Yes, please. (laughs) Good. It'll be just like old times, won't it? (laughs) It's nice to have you sitting down to tea again, Grace. Just like old times. I don't feel as though I've been away at all. <laughs> I must say you're looking well, Les. Oh, I feel fine. <laughs> you know, Grace, you were a lucky girl to have a holiday abroad. I suppose I was. But for some reason or other, I don't think I fully appreciated it. Oh, don't tell Chris that. She thinks it's wonderful to travel the world ever since she's got to know Lady Hylborough. Yeah, uh, what's the time, anyway? Right. Hey, hey, up, Phil. It's gone six. Switch on the news. Oh, good gracious, yes. See what Mr. Butler's mm. done for us, or, or to us. <laughs> well, whatever he says, I've got a feeling it's not going to be very pleasant, Dan. <laughs> He's got a devil of a lot of money to get from somewhere. Mm. Well, he'd have a bit of a job to get it from me at the moment. As my bank manager would very soon tell it. <laughs> oh, <darling. laughs> I'll bet his cigarettes go up. An income tax. Mr. Shaker has proposed oh, in his budget statement oh. cuts in the food subsidies oh, and concessions good. in income tax, Good. family allowances, and hmm. pensions. The income tax proposal is that the single allowance shall be increased from £110 to £120. Uh-huh. The married allowance from £190 to £210. I forget now, I can see. The child allowance from £75. Oh, well, that's better anyway. The earned income release will be... Oh, there it is. Petrol up, oil up. Hi. A good job we got that heavy ploughing done. Yeah, that Lakey Hill job of mine's going to cost a bit more there, that rate. Right? Yeah, how's the new bank rate of 4% going to affect that overdraft, Dan? I don't know. Better see my bank manager in the morning about yeah. that. Well, milk, meat and flour are all going up in price. I wonder if the farmers are going to get anything out of that increase. Yeah, I don't know. I won't, I'm afraid. What it will do is make the public realise just what it costs to go and produce this stuff. Yeah, that's oh, well, fair enough. never mind. Income tax allowances are up and family allowances have gone from five bob to eight bob, so Jack and Peggy will be pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> and old Walter hasn't got to pay any more for his pipe or his pint, so he'll be pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, for goodness sake, let's talk about something else. I've never been able to imagine Mum and Dad as a courting couple. And it's even more strange to think of Dad courting someone who isn't Mum. Ah, uh, you had a lot of girlfriends, you were Dad. Oh, we did, didn't he? I mean, marrying someone who isn't Mum. Hmm, she was my closest friend at the time. Perhaps my closest friend ever. What was she like? Well, there's a question. I mean, apart from being pretty. 
She played a lot of tennis. Yeah, and rode a lot of horses. She was always on a horse. Well, she ran the stables with you, Chris, didn't she? Mm. Crikey, tennis and riding. She sounds like Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Eh? Oh, does her live over at Little Crockery? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was nothing like Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. She had a very strong personality, a very independent spirit. Oh, a bit too independent, some said. Uh, there were some of us that thought, ah, well, my gone days, I suppose. No, Uncle Tom, do say. Well, put it this way, Shula. We're all very fond of young Elizabeth. Oh, she's a real bright spark. But there are times she when... She wasn't like Elizabeth. No, nothing like. Oh. Uh, An only one, no mother. Oh, and her father doted on her. Well, it's hardly surprising she had a mind of her own. Oh, and she led Phil a merry dance. Uncle Tom, that's not fair, and you know it. They were very much in love. Well, she was very modern in her ways. How do you mean? Well, she was always adamant that her work at the stables took priority over starting her family. <laughs> Sounds very sensible to me. Oh, she wouldn't hear of having children. Oh, no, wouldn't hear of it. Her wanted to wait a while. Hmm. I bet that drew a few old-fashioned comments. Unless Ambridge has changed a lot since then. Well, I mean, it's not natural, is it? People get married to have babies. Otherwise, what's the point? Uncle Wolf. Anyway, Phil absolutely doted on her. And she did begin to change her mind about babies when they'd been married a little while. Ah, there she is. Hunched up over a hot little stove, getting the old man's supper ready. Oh, don't be a clock. <laughs> Finished for the day? Yeah. Anything new? No, I don't think so. Well, what's for supper tonight? Sausage and mash, faggots and peas. Wait and see. <laughs> there. Look. Is that your taste? Partridge? Oh, wacko. You've been poaching. You seem to forget my father owns most of the shooting round here, young man. Oops. Thank you, pardon. Go on. Get yourself washed. It's just ready. All right. Uh, sink covered up with saucepans and paraphernalia. You could wash in the bathroom, of course. Oh, I miss all the cooking smells. Oh, no fear. <laughs> what have you been doing till now? Oh, getting everything ready for the autumn sale tomorrow. Uh, I've got a bit to go. Fifteen cows culled out, twenty-five in-calf heifers, eight baroners and two yearling bulls. Ought to bring in quite a crowd. Oh, good. Uh, you calf. Oh, it's all right. There's one thing I like more than a partridge. It's a brace of them. You know, I think I'll send a couple to Isabel Workman, just as a jest. Oh, yes, why not? Oh, best cutlery and glass out on the table, too, eh? What are we celebrating? Nothing. I just thought it would look rather nice. Well, it does, too. Oh, good law, and wine. I went home and raided Daddy's cellar. Ah, clever girl. Hey, come here a minute. Oh. Well, uh, something wrong? Absolutely nothing. This is for being a clever girl. <laughs> the partridge will get cold. You don't want it to spoil after all my slaving over the stove, do you? Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> a beano like this is sort of extending the holiday. A good weekend, wasn't it? Lovely. I didn't mind pram pushing a bit. Ha! Do you think anybody thought it was ours? Well, what's the matter? Mm? Well, I made a gag. No reaction. Oh, I was just thinking. Well, what about? Well... <laughs> I don't know, I suppose it's silly, really, but, well, having to take care of Isabel's baby over the weekend and all that, yeah. I think perhaps you were right after all, Phil, and I was wrong. Hmm. What about? Waiting what? five years. Huh? For a family of our own. Oh. I mean, it, it's been rather selfish on my part to insist on waiting a while. I'm beginning to realize that now, and the weekend rather brought it home to me. I didn't do too badly managing Isabel's baby, did I? Too badly? Why, you're an absolute natural. Yes. That's what I'm beginning to feel myself. You were right, sir. Let's forget all this waiting five years nonsense. But a decision like that, well, it's a terribly intimate thing, isn't it? Did Grace confide in you, Auntie Chris? <laughs> no need to confide. It wasn't long before everybody in Ambridge knew that Grace had come over all broody. Typical. It's like living in a goldfish bowl. Oh, was it spread, that rumour, anyway, about Grace and the babies? Well, actually, Shula, I have to admit that, well, it was such exciting news at the time. You mean you gave away her secret? Oh, no, nothing like that. As a matter of fact, it was Mum who first pointed out that Grace's attitude had changed. They'd had this 
weekend away, you see. Oh, my sister was a great one for jumping to conclusions. Oh, yes, <laughs> Doris was a clever woman. She knew. She knew them things. And when Phil and Grace got back, she... She was... sent something was different. Oh. Talking of men, Dad, he should have seen no sheepdog trials on Saturday. By golly, I should have. I looked in at Mrs. B's specially to watch it. If we had a set of our own, we could be independent. <laughs> independent television at Brookfield as well as in London, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that Farmer Wilson, the one who won, <laughs> him and his two dogs, see, what are the names? Uh, uh, Bill and Nat. Mm. By, they could handle sheep all right between them. Hmm. Oh, Grace and Phil back, Dan. Yes, uh, I saw Phil for a second or two. Oh, oh yeah. did they have a nice time? Oh, from what he says, they spent all their time baby-minding and looking after the house. Oh? Grace's friend had scalded her foot and her husband was away. Oh, I say, what a rotten shame. They must have had a thoroughly disappointing weekend. Oh, I don't know. Phil spoke as though they enjoyed it. Mm, baby-minding, eh? Ah. Ah, and they enjoyed it. Now, that might be the best thing that could have happened. Eh? Well, they wouldn't have enjoyed it if Grace hadn't been perfectly happy. And if Grace was perfectly happy baby-minding, why then? Why then what? <laughs> Never you mind. I don't know hmm? about you, Mum. I bet she starts knitting tiny woolen garments within the week. <laughs> and all because Isabel Workman scolded her <laughs> nothing of the sort. I never said a word. All I said was... But you mustn't get the impression that the talk about Grace was in any way unkind, Shula. It's just that, well, everyone wanted them to have children. And if they had started a family, oh, oh, it makes me feel almost eerie, as if someone stepped on my grave. What is that, dear? You're all looking very solid. Oh, it's nothing, Jill. Just one of Walter's old ghost stories. It's funny that's such a Christmas tradition, isn't it? I suppose it goes back to Dickens, the ghost of Christmas past and all that. Uh, perhaps too many ghosts of Christmas past. Oh, more tea, anyone? It's freshly brewed. I'll leave it here. I'll, I'll pour, Joe. Right, thanks. About five minutes for the sausage rolls. I hope you've left a bit of room for them. Hmm. All this talk about Dad and Grace gives me an odd feeling. If they'd had children, then I might not be here, if you see what I mean. I understand you. But it can't have been more than a couple of weeks after that time that, that the accident happened. Wasn't it the same week? Oh, ah, yes. They'd been away. And it happened that same week. The fire, you mean? Ah, uh, terrible night. We were there, weren't we, Walter? Oh, ah, yes. It, it was the earring that caused it. An earring that caused the fire? No, no, no. no. Oh, she, she and Phil went up to Grey Gables for dinner. Oh, well, what was the name of the bloke who used to run it? Oh, that's where our stables were in those days. Wasn't John Tregoran with them? John and Carol. Uh. But I don't think they were married then. Oh, Reggie Trentham. That was his name. He used to be up at Grey Gables. But what about this earring? Uh, it was a tragedy. Oh, the worst thing I can remember in Hambridge. Well, you see, they were all sitting around and chatting when Grace discovered... Anybody else another, Carol? I'd love one. John? Mm, please, Grace. Oh, confound it. I've lost an earring. Where? In here? No, I have a feeling it came off as I was getting out of the car. Oh, well, look, I'll go and have a look. Oh, no, you carry on and get the drink. I'm almost sure I'll find it on the floor of the car. Ah, Shall be a moment. Right, <laughs> I'd be rather undressed without it. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, same again then, Reggie, please, all round. Uh, have one yourself. Oh, bless you with those few kind words. <laughs> well, now, John, let's get back to business. You want to borrow our lorry on Saturday week for how long? Two hours? Mm, a couple of hours in the morning should do nicely. Uh -huh. Do you want the driver as well? No, thanks. I can drive it myself. <laughs> if I can be trusted. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. It should be quite a do with this safe field day and comfort of yours, John. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised to see you raise more than enough money for the village hall roof repairs. Oh, just pray we don't get rained out on the day, that's all. No! Uh, yeah, everybody! Eh? No! Yeah, that was great. Oh, do come quickly! The stables are on fire! Oh, what? Oh, no, not the blaze! Hey? Come on, quickly! Help me with all the hoods! Oh, 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 what's all the commotion? Fire, Reggie. The stables are going up. Now ring for the fire brigade straight away, will you? Can you take the pony? Yes, I'll try. Now, come on, steady, steady, steady. It's all right, old girl. Oh, my gosh, we're lucky to get him out. Yes, certainly were. What's up? Midnight couldn't have been tired. And look, she's going back into the stable. What? No, Grace. No, don't do it. She's going in after midnight. Grace, 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 come back. The roof's collapsing. For God's sake, Grace, come back. Look at that roof. It's caving. Horrible. Phil, uh, Phil, you fool. Let me go. 
Grace is in there. Let me go, blast it, John. Now, look, Billy, suicide. Uh, if you go in... Oh, the Grace! The Grace! Bill, you madman! Don't let him! Grace! Grace! Oh, my God! Grace! Where is she? Oh, she may have gone out through the tent room window. No! She, she must have... Uh, there, look! Under that beam! Of course. Get it out there! Go on, help me! Get down! Oh, Heave! Right, oh. 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 Well, harder! Oh. Harder! Heave, blast you! Pull your guts out! Let's go! Oh, look! The straw! Underneath her! She's getting a knife! Stand on it! Don't let the fire get too hard! All right, Phil. All right. Now, get on this beam and heave. And heave. Yeah. Oh. He's coming! A bit more! All together! We come running up the interstum. Oh, yes. I remember the scares that had happened today. Oh, the, the flames was jumping that eye into the sky. You could see him from the bull. Everybody poured out into the night and run to help. I put in a call to the fire brigade, but they was already coming. Oh, it was only a couple of minutes, but by the time we got there, things looked pretty bad. Ah, uh, it was chaos. Apart from me and Walter, Dan was the only one who seemed to have his wits about him. He walked around just giving orders. Any more, old Walter? No, no, my God, why not? Well, there's a standpipe over there. The blasted hose won't reach. Hey, how much of that tackle did you manage to get out? Uh, not a lot. Oh. A bit out through the broken window with a hay rake, and then the flames drove us back. Oh. Listen a minute. Ah, that's the fire engine now. Time it took them about 15 minutes to come from Hollerton. Oh. That's darn good going. Hey, I'm the lone stool by this old on it. I uh, keep out of the road and let him get at right. it. Right, uh, Tom. Yes, Dan. Show where the water is, will you? Right off. Water's over here, you chap. Right on, thanks. Stay here, Walter. Do what you can to help. Oh, will right, right old Dan, lad. It must have been horrific. Well, it was only horrific afterwards, when we heard <laughs> she died. Yeah, Pell went off in the ambulance. I was at Brookfield with your grandfather. We stayed on to make sure things was under control, didn't we, Tom? We did that. Everyone oh, must have been terribly upset. I don't know, Shula. It's a funny thing about emergencies. In an odd way, your mind starts turning to trivial things. I suppose it's a sort of self-protection. Yes. Anyway, though we knew that the accident must have been a serious one, I don't think it crossed anyone's mind certainly didn't cross mine that... Well, no, nor mine. Oh, nor mine. We, we, we just didn't think that she could possibly be. Oh, has somebody just come in? Not Mum, surely. It's too early for her to be back. Yeah, my big Uncle Tom or Phil, perhaps. Oh, it's Phil. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect you back quite so soon. Chris and I was... A... Phil. Phil there. What's gone wrong? In my arms. On the way to the hospital. She... She's dead. Are you all right, Chris? Yes. Yes, I'm fine. Dad must have been shot. Oh, I think it almost broke him completely. But not only Phil. Everyone in the whole village. And elsewhere, too. She had so many friends. Oh, I wouldn't hear a word said against her. No, not would I. Letters and flowers kept coming in for weeks afterwards. I suppose none of us had known such a sudden, shocking death since the war. Poor Auntie Chris. I didn't know she was your best friend. For a while, I was very angry with Dad. Everyone else was so shocked, and he just seemed to be carrying on as if nothing had happened. That was his way of coping with it, I suppose. Ah, a very good way. Ah, yes, Dan was good in situations like that. He knew things be instinct, Dan did. Down to earth. Oh, he was right down to earth. Ah, there you are, Chris. Just going to see about a spot of breakfast, are you? <laughs> good job I caught you. Because you might put an extra ration or two to make a sandwich for Simon, will you? Please come up to give me a hand, you see. Dad, honestly. What? At a time like this, you talk about rashes of bacon. Haven't you got any feeling? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I, I think so. My feelings are just the same as anybody else's. I've certainly got no appetite. Now, look, my dear. 
But what good do you reckon you're doing anybody by taking that attitude? Well, it, it's natural enough, isn't it? Aye, aye, but uh, not very helpful. Not to anybody. Now, look, me and Simon there in the milking shed, we've got the same feelings as you and everybody else, but we still had to carry on milking. Just the same as you had to carry on feeding and watering those horses you've got there. Well, I didn't say anything about not doing the milking or not feeding the horses, did I? Of course those jobs have got to be done. Uh, and the same applies to breakfast and housework and plowing and muck spreading and everything else, Chris. Life must go on, my love. It's heartbreaking and dreadful. But it's not the end of the world. Life must go on for you, for Phil, for all of us. So let's all get busy and do something to help it. But, but, Dad, why should a thing like this have to happen to us? Why? Why should it happen to us? Things like this are happening to people every day, Tris. Every day of the week. Somebody somewhere has a thing just like this to face up to and contend with. Now, why should we consider ourselves any different from other people just because we're the Archer family? We're not any different from us. Here we are, piping hot from the oven. Well, what's up this time? Not more of Uncle Walter's ghost stories. You're all sitting in a row staring at the fire. You think this was awake, not Christmas Eve. Oh, well, well, I... Well, don't all look at me like that, as though I was the ghost of Christmas past. Oh, it's nothing really, Mum. You know Uncle Walter when he gets going. Uncle Walter's the fat boy. He wants to make your flesh creep. <laughs> I'm fat. There's nothing fat about me. Uh, a bit of Battenberg, that's all the sugar I allow to myself. Oh, calm down, Uncle Walter, and have another one of your special cakes. Joe went to a lot of trouble to make them for you. Well, go on, Walter. What was the story you were telling that had everyone so enthralled? Oh, don't make us sit through that again. <laughs> no, no, please. I don't know where he gets them from, do you? Too many specials, if you ask me. But I... Now, would... Uncle Walter, that's quite enough. I expect Marjorie Antibus will drop by this afternoon, and if you aren't careful, I shall put her in charge of it. Oh, no. <laughs> now then, I think we should all forget ghosts and cheer up a bit. Quite right, Jill. It's our duty to keep cheerful. Well, that's what Prue always says. Especially at this time of year. We do have happy memories to call on. You know, when I was in my teens, and all the childhood thrill of Christmas had worn off, I started to think it was all a bit of a bore. I suspect Elizabeth still does. Uh, oh, she liked parties, though. Yeah, did I tell you they had three at the end of the But in the last couple of years, it struck me that it's really more important. How do you mean, love? Well, I don't know, really. I, I suppose it just seems like a time to sit back and reflect on your blessings. Ah, that's true enough. I mean, just the simple things. Families, of course, and friends. But even things like being alive another year. Mm. Oh, but there's plenty of them to live. Dan and, and Laura and... All right, say it. And Bob Larkin. Oh, Uncle Tom, come on, don't upset yourself. Oh, Shula's right. But this time of year I keep finding myself thinking about him. I would be here today if it hadn't been for that night Phil and I went out determined to catch our poacher. <coughs> that you, Phil? Yes, Uncle Tom. You hear that blooming dog? Something must have disturbed him. Yeah. Let him go, wasn't he? Yeah, it certainly was. Now, I went through the top half of the dog just on dusk, Phil. Uh -huh. Pushed most of the birds down this way. And I reckon this is where they'll have to come to find them. Uh, what do we do, then? Well, keep a quiet patrol through the whole cover. Mm -hmm. If here's nothing, meet back here. Same spot every hour. All right? Yeah. All right, then. Right. Off you go, then. And be as quiet as you can, lad. Yeah. Right out. But it was me who'd come across him in the woods. Bob Larkin. Oh, I'd never liked him anyway. And people said he'd been making noise at my prue. Underhanded type. I told him where to get off, don't you worry. And I'd have given him a good hiding too, if he tried his luck with her. I suppose it was a bit awkward us being on such bad terms like that, though. What are you doing with that bird? Huh? What's that? All right, you monkey. Come on, the game's up. Why, you, Tom! Oh! Oh! Don't stop your water, uh, All right, my duty. Give me that gun! Let go of it, brother! No! Oh. Get out, you! Trying to whistle down my throat, are you? Let go of that gun, you fool! 
I'll give you a right old face. Oh. I go down. I go down. Over here. Well, hold on, I do. Oh, my wrist. Leave go of it. Go on, let go. Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom, are you all right? Uncle Tom. Here. Quick. Bring your torch. Hurry, Phil. What's happened? Why are you covered in blood? I'm all right. Showing it on him down there. Bob Larkin. Bob Larkin? Oh, my God. Silly fool. If he hadn't twisted and squirmed like that, he'd probably be alive today. But no. He wasn't man enough to stand still and take a paste in. Well, it wasn't my fault, was it? I mean, it's normal to carry a gun when you're a gamekeeper. Not that the police had a common sense to see it that way. First, the local boys turned up. And then Detective Inspector Worth. And it was almost dawn by that time. He swung that 410 liner up towards me, you see, sir. I had to close with him and try to grab it in case he used it. And then, when we fell over through that hazel clump, there was... I don't know what happened. It went off. I saw him crash through there and heard the bang. Well, I must tell you I'm arresting you, Mr. Forrest. What? Arresting? Yes. Arresting you on a charge of killing that man there, who I understand is identified as Bob Larkin. Murder? But... but You're but... not obliged to say anything in answer to the charge. But anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. Uh, I never murdered anybody in my life. Of course he didn't. That's not for you to decide, Mr. Archer, or me, or the prisoner here. That's something that can only be decided in a court of law. Sorry, Mr. Forrest, but I'm going to have to take you in. But you didn't have to stay in jail, did you, Uncle Tom? Of course he didn't. Well, I knew I was innocent. They had to let me go in the end. But first it was murder, then manslaughter... And then I was free at last. Oh, but it was a terrible time for you, Tom. Yes, it was. Terrible being shut up like that. A man like you, who's always spent all of his life roaming about in the open air. I only have to think about what it would do to Jules. I remember it well. Mum was so worried about oh, you. Oh, yes. But you remember when you come home? Ah, I shall never forget it. Brought tears to me eyes. Oh, there was the boatist of brass band playing. And, and, and free drinks in the bowl. <sighs> Oh, what a day that was. <laughs> I decided there and then that I didn't want to leave Ambridge again. Please, me! Come on through, Jennifer. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Come and sit down. Have something to eat. Yes, I'll pour you some tea. Oh, you're looking very glamorous, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, this old thing. Oh, that's nothing very special. Oh, trust me to turn up in my old jeans. Oh. I've just come from the Echo's office party. Oh, oh did they have goings-on? I hope Elizabeth wasn't joining in any goings-on. <laughs> it was all quite harmless, really. Hmm. You know that game where you have to pass a matchbox through with somebody's clothes? <laughs> no, but I reckon I'd like to learn. <laughs> <laughs> too old for, too old for that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, I ain't too old for a bit of slap and tickle. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to worry about Elizabeth. It wasn't a very dangerous party. I think it seems a bit on the root side. Oh, here's your tea. Tom. Have you got oh. enough to eat there? Oh, don't be such an old stick in the mud, Uncle Tom. You remind me of the way people used to go on when I was Elizabeth's age. And I didn't do too badly, did I? Mm, well... Mum and Dad were always on at me. Just like you and Phil go on at Elizabeth. And Dad was the worst. All he wanted me to do in life was stand behind the bar at the ball pulling pipes. Well, he was full of ideas, your dad was. Ah, uh, not a great one for carrying them out, though, was he? No, no. What's the use of hoping or expecting anything from kids? They go their own way in the end. And what did you want Jennifer to do, then? You never tried to dissuade her from being a teacher. Because that was obviously what she wanted. But I'd have liked to see her go through the British Hotels and Catering Association course. The apprentice and go right through. Yeah, just say she could run this place while you go gallivanting off every day, fishing or shooting or boozing with your mate. Now, shut up. Was our Jennifer properly trained for the job, not pitchforked into it willy-nilly like we were, we'd soon have this place the talk of the county. What, the old bull in at Ambridge? Never. I've seen success stories built up out of far less promising material than the bull. We ran it quite well, but it doesn't have the touch of class that attracts the big spending tourists. You mean you'd put special fancy foods on instead of the straightforward English dishes that we put on at the moment? We'd reorganise everything. Make the dining room three times as big. Well, where would you build them? Over the bowling green. Oh, golly. That would be popular among the locals, I don't think. It isn't the locals I'm trying to attract. It's the American tourists or industrialists from Holliton who are prepared to buy expensive meals and take expensive wines to go with them. 
I don't care what you say. If you did that to the ball, the whole atmosphere of the place would change. And a good thing, too. Can't live forever in the past. It's time we were open. And in any case, you talk about attracting the wealthy people, the big spenders. I vote we take it for the ordinary everyday people as we are now. Imagine you as a teenager, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I look back on the 60s and think, how could I have? I mean, how could I? Remember all that peace and free love, Jill? Me? Mm. I was too old for all that before it had even begun. <laughs> oh, oh, you old hippie, Jennifer. I was a hippie. Now I'm I'm just an old young <laughs> Is that some sort of a fish? <laughs> oh, just bath me with a mince pie, Tom. Oh, Jennifer, right, what would you like? Oh, I'll have a, another sandwich, please. All right. <sighs> anyway, I was never really a, a committed hippie. I liked miniskirts as well as those patched jeans and that sort of thing. <laughs> I couldn't bear to be formal. I remember at Sid Perks' wedding, Lillian and I had to really struggle into those awful bridesmaid <laughs> dresses. There. Oh, what a fuss and palaver, and all for the sake of bringing together a man and woman in holy wedlock and all that caper. Oh, come off it. You like dressing up as much as the next one. Oh, yes, but not like this. I feel like something off a 1915 picture postcard. Oh, you look very nice, actually. And I'm not kidding. That dress might seem over-feminine to you, but it does suit you. Mm, does it, you reckon? Mm, definitely. Mm, well, I suppose I'd pass in a crowd. Oh, but give me the jeans or a miniskirt every time. Where's Mum? With the bride? No, I think Mrs. Mead's with her. With Polly, I mean. Mum's putting the final touches to her own get-up. She looks very nice as well. Yeah, Mum always comes out well on occasions like this. She pays for dressing up. Well, I think that's about as far as I can go. The only thing to do now is to wait for the car to arrive. Oh, I'm ready too. Oh, pair of good girls, aren't we? Ready before time. You really didn't like weddings much, did you? No. And remember the scandal when I had Adam? Oh, the few oi braces had raised new. Oh, rubbish. No one thinks anything of it these days. Oh, yes, they do. If Elizabeth gets pregnant, I'll never forgive her. But it must have been awful, really, Jennifer. I mean, in Ambridge. Well, it was, rather. Yes. I was Ambridge's first unmarried mother. No, you weren't. You wasn't the first, and, uh, and I shouldn't think you'll be the last. I was? Rubbish. There has been lots of illegitimate babies born since the beginning of time. People must have been awful to you. Yes, they were. I moved down to Bristol in the end. First, I was terrified to tell anybody. How long did you keep it a secret? Well, not long. I went to the vicar and told him. I was too terrified to tell Mum and Dad. I'll never forget creeping into his study. Parson has plenty of practice in the art of keeping a secret, you know. Have no fear. So out with it, Jennifer. What have you come to see me about, eh? I've... I've come to ask you a favour, Vicar. Oh, yes? I'm, I'm in a terrible mess, and yet it's my own fault. I don't blame anyone, and I'm going to face up to it. But sooner or later, my parents have got to be told, and, and that's just something I can't bring myself to do. And I wonder, Mr. Reeford, would you tell them? You see, I... Yes? And what would you like me to tell them, my dear? I... I'm going to have a baby. I see. And when do you expect your baby to be born, Jennifer? In about six months. I see. And you've seen the doctor and found that everything is normal, I suppose? Oh, oh, yes. I've been seeing a doctor in Bortus. Everything's all right physically. But in other ways, socially, morally. Yes. Socially, morally. Legally. Well, of course, those considerations bring you a lot of problems to deal with, don't they? Yes, except, well, morally... Do you want to discuss that aspect of it at this particular moment? Well, don't you, Vicar? I mean, I thought... You, you thought I'd start to moralise at you, is that it? You expected a sermon, eh? Well, yes. My dear, what possible good would be served now by lecturing you on the virtues of chastity? It's a bit late, isn't it? Facts are facts, so let's deal with them. Now, in the first place, I'm sorry, but I couldn't agree to tell your parents for you. Oh. It wouldn't be fair either to them or to you. To me? But it would make things so much easier. If it would, my dear, I'd do it. But it won't. Whatever I said, however I put it, you would still have to face them sooner or later. I beg you, tell your parents. And those near to you will have to know, as soon as you can. But this I promise you. Once you have made a clean breast of things, then I'll be there to back you up. 
I'll come and see your people the same day if you let me know. It's humanly possible. What did Uncle Teddy say? After the initial shock, she was very good. But she got used to looking after Jack by then. She must have been ready for anything. Mm, she went through a lot. Jack wasn't too pleased about the baby, though, was he? No, he threatened to chuck me out. Yeah, Mrs. P didn't like it much either. <laughs> Granny P was awful about it. it. Took me years to learn any affection for her after that. Well, um, well, not years, months. Did you marry Roger soon afterwards? Soonish. He wasn't father, of course. Everybody knew that. Three children by three, three different, different men. Mm. Oh, Judah, yes. I think you've turned into an old prude since you've been married. Oh, I don't mean it to sound like that. It's, it's just... Well, and it's Debbie's birthday today, isn't it? Yes, I never forget Debbie. I've always felt sorry for her being so close to Christmas. <laughs> Doesn't seem to have arrested her development. She's locked in her room listening to some awful music. I remember when you were in the hospital having Debbie. We had a party here at Rookfield. Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? Ah, I remember that. There was a lot of old maid wine. Oh, strong stuff, eh? Ah, <laughs> Tuna came and gave us a serenade. I didn't, did I? Yes, <laughs> you did, dear. Did, you know, it must have been Elizabeth. No, it was you on the recorder. That's all your mum and dad could do to stop you from going on all night. <laughs> oh, that can't have been me. I was such a shy thing. Shy? You? <laughs> oh. Say it, Shula. Shy you weren't. <laughs> Oh, Laura, let me take it, Coach. Oh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Why aren't you all eating your grub? Oh, right. You haven't been waiting for me, have you? Who do you think we'd a dead start without you, Laura? <laughs> hey, how's things, Tony? Did you get your mother to Borchester safe and sound? Yes, she's going to see Jennifer this afternoon. Oh, good. Adam sends his love and a big kiss for you, Gran. Oh, bless you. Look, Uncle Tom, uh -huh. could you look after the drinks for me? Because I've got to go and organise a surprise that uh -huh. Shula's got for everyone. Oh, yeah. Of course, Phil. Good, cool, thanks. Back in a minute. No, no. Uh, none of that for me, Tom. I'll have a brandy if you've got one. Yeah, all right, Tom, I'll get it. Oh, thanks, Dan. Hey, then, Chris, my love, can I top you up? Hey. Oh, no, thanks, Uncle Tom. Uh, this really is a bit poky. Oh, no, no. Uh, yes. How about you, then, Tony? Cool. Oh, look, yes, please, Uncle Tom. Quiet, everybody, right, please. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Well, uh, as you've probably gathered, Shula's had a tenor recorder for Christmas. Now she's mastered the desk count, and <laughs> before we eat, she wants to play a carol for us. Oh, oh, yes. Come on, then, Shula. Well, first of all, I'd like to play the holly and the ivy, and then the... Oh, no, I think just the one piece for now, love. <laughs> but, Daddy, I've oh, got... Off you go, Shula. We're all waiting. Oh, very well, Mummy. <laughs> good you were on the recorder. Quite sweet, really. Sweet? Oh, I must have been awful. No, you weren't awful, dear. A bit precocious, perhaps. Well, you certainly knew your own mind. Oh, I've heard him <laughs> looking back in anger, but looking back in embarrassment. <laughs> Twenty years from now, you might be remembering this Christmas and cringy. Oh, don't you listen to him, love. I've seen more Christmases than you and Jennifer put together, and there's no point in feeling embarrassed about the past. No, ah, that's right enough. No point at all. Everyone changes. I think we've had quite enough looking back for one day. Here, here, it's too agonising. Let's pie, anyone? Vintage Archers was produced in BBC Pebble Mill by Liz Rigby.